Uh, hi, in this video, I will show you how we can monitor Amazon EKS service with using open source Prometheus and Grafana stack. As you see in this picture, so this is just a pictorial ORI of my demo where I will be creating an EKS cluster in the Amazon account, AWS account. And on top of that EKS cluster, I will be hosting two services that is Prometheus and Grafana. So all these two tools are open source one. And at the end, what we'll do is we will be able to see the, the required metrics, logs at the um, at the Grafana dashboards. Okay, so that's the main aim of this demo. Yeah. So um, so let me first show you uh, my AWS account. So this is my AWS account. This is my AWS uh, portal. Yeah, account portal, where I have clear created an example EKS cluster where I will be using this EKS cluster uh, to do those configurations. Um, so what I did is to save the time, right? So to, uh, because to create the um, EKS cluster, it would take around 15 minutes, yeah? So that's the reason to save the time. I have created one example EKS cluster here, which is up and running. And uh, to help you in that step, like how you can create EKS cluster. So this is the step you need to follow here. First of all, just open the PowerShell window with using, or it can be a, a administrator PowerShell window or just a normal PowerShell window. And after that, what I did is I did configure the, I did set the context of AWS account by using AWS CLI command that is AWS configure. And after that, you need to provide the access key ID, access key, that is secret access key. Then the reason, so currently I have created the EKS cluster in the US East region. Then the default output format, that is reason, yeah. And finally, to verify whether I have already set the context, yeah. And what I did is I did this, yeah. So I just checked AWS STS get caller identity. So it has set the context, yeah. And finally, I just directly jump and run this command, yeah. So so here I'm leveraging the EKS CTL, that is Elastic Kubernetes Service Command Line Tool, yeah. So this is a, again command line interface from given from the Amazon. You need to install this tool so that you can use this utility, yeah. That is EKS CTL. So I'm leveraging that EKS CTL. A command line to create my EKS cluster, which is very straightforward here. Yeah. So if you want to know more about how you can install the EKS CTL, please do watch my previous videos. Yeah. And here we have given the command called create cluster. Name is this is my cluster name. And the node type I have chosen T2 large because I need some spaces. I need some better resource um, nodes. Yeah. So that's the reason I choose this. Then the node number equal to three, minimum equal to three, and maximum equal to five. And reason is US East one. Yeah. So once I run the run this command, I see that the uh, it has successfully run created the EKS cluster. Yeah. So here I, here you go right. So here it says that the EKS cluster in US region is ready. And in the sense, if I show you, so this is the EKS cluster which I created by this command. Yeah. So with that now we are ready with the ground. In the sense, we are ready with the EKS cluster. Now this is the original step that we need to follow to configure the Prometheus and Grafana on the EKS cluster right so to save the time what i did is i documented all the required commands in in a json format and this document will be shared in the github repo and the github repo link will be shared in my videos description okay please do follow that yeah um so here let's let's go ahead and check uh, um, uh, uh, the the namespaces okay so this you can ignore this which we have already created so we have created the EKS cluster. Now let me use the kubectl command and check what are the namespaces present under uh, the cluster. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. So here, what I do is I use um, this command to get the uh, the namespaces which are there in the uh, Kubernetes. Okay. So again, kubectl is again a one more utility uh, which will help us to interact with the Kubernetes API server. Right, so that's the reason so our cluster is up and running and we see that the these are the uh, parts are been running under namespace yeah, under under all default namespaces so default namespaces which includes cube system and uh, cube system default again yeah so now let's go to the uh, next steps so in the sense cube CTL is also work is also working fine okay that's what the uh, main reason behind just running a example cube CTL command okay now again now first step is to add the prometheus helm repo Right, we have one more requirement that is to install the Helm, yeah, Helm charts in your or Helm configurations in your system, 
right so this is the command we are again using the helm utility so to know more about how we can configure the helm in the windows 10 system or windows system please do watch my previous videos okay so now again let's go ahead and, and use that helm utility to do the next step here what we are doing right let me reiterate again we are adding the prometheus helm into our local repo of helm again yeah so let me do that what it in general it does is it will download the uh, the uh, the upstream um, uh, repos and get it configured under helm configuration files yeah so prometheus community has been added to your repository that's what the output i have got and that's what the expected one now let's get so let's get to the next step so next step is to add the grafana helm repos again okay because we are installing both the utility right both prometheus and grafana so now we have done with the prometheus let's do for the grafana Similarly, again, it's adding the community uh, versions uh, Grafana repo at the Helm cha Helm uh, Helm directories in my system. Yeah? It's, it says that it has successfully added. So now, why, now we are good with the required uh, Helm repos at my local charts. Now let's go to the next command. So next command is to create one Prometheus namespace. Okay, so it's almost recommended that whenever you install something or whenever you spinning up something in the your EKS cluster, it is recommended to I mean, categorize it according to your namespaces. Okay, that's the reason we are keeping the Prometheus in the separate namespace called Prometheus. So we have successfully created the promote namespaces. Let's check what are the um, what are the namespaces. Okay, kubectl get namespaces is the command which will help us to fetch the namespaces. Okay. Here we go. Right. So we have just now created the Prometheus. So our our uh, namespace is created so by default we have the we should have uh, uh, four other namespaces as well yeah so that is the selected one now let's go to the next command so next command is bit um, bit tricky one so in the sense here what we are doing is we are installing the prometheus with using the helm charts okay so that's the reason we are using the command called helm here these are the command let's let me walk you through that one as well so finally what we are doing is we are we are we are doing some configuration so that is required to do this um, to install the Prometheus in my EKS cluster. Okay, let me quickly walk you through this code, this this command line as well. Yeah. So let me put. I think it is not copied. Let me copy again. So here you go. So Helm install Prometheus, Prometheus community for slash Prometheus. The namespace we are targeting is the Prometheus which we created above. And the set is nothing but we are setting the storage class equal to GP2. Yeah. Alert manager dot persistent volume dot storage class equal to GP2. So this is how you set the configurations at the Prometheus. Okay. So here the persistent volume storage class I am targeting it to is GP2 version. Yeah. Similarly, server persistent volume storage class equal to GP2 in the sense. Alert manager and servers both a persistent volume storage class is set to GP2 version. Yeah, let's do that. So in general, this commandlet is now installing the Prometheus pod in the AWS or Amazon EKS cluster. Yeah. So that is how you need to understand uh, what actually these are doing. Right. So let's wait for some time. So it's while it is creating, it will generally um, give the output. So let's wait for that. It's currently doing the configurations from the back end. Yeah. So once this is done, we will go for the next command. That is to um, uh, that is to check if, what are the components are being deployed at the Prometheus namespaces. Yeah. Here you go. Right. It has successfully uh, done the configurations. Okay. Let me come from the top. So. So here we have the class equal to GP2. Name is Prometheus. Right. So you see. Right. The last date deployed is today's date. Uh, the namespace is Prometheus deployed one state, yeah, and it is giving all the required outputs. Okay, so that's it. In the sense, it has done the command has successfully ran, and we have installed the Prometheus in our EKS cluster. Now let's validate. Now we need to validate, right? So how do we validate with using kubectl command? Okay, so let me do that. Let me recopy it again.
So now we have configured the Prometheus. I'm just checking if that has been configured successfully, okay? So in general, what it does is it will get all the resources and services sitting under this namespace, yeah? Prometheus namespace, as you see here, right? So we have the parts, we have the services, we have the daemon set, we have the yeah, app, daemon, deployment app, and we have the replicate set, right? So there are four, there are five types in general, yeah? There are five types of deployment is running under this namespaces. And that's where these data gets us the, the, the update in regards to that one, okay? So now let's go to the next command. So next one is port forwarding, yeah? So this is why do I am doing this one is, see now Prometheus service is up and running in our, um, um, uh, Prometheus is, uh, is up and running uh, in our EKS cluster. Now we can we can access that from our laptop. How do we access that Prometheus which is running in the EKS cluster from our laptop is by using the port forwarding method, yeah? So this is where I'm doing now. So once this gets successfully forwarded, we can access that Prometheus from my laptop. Okay, let me do that after that. Here you go, right? The port is now successfully forwarded to, um, let's say, uh, 9090. Yeah? So let me show you. So let's go here. So whenever there is a port forwarding happens, then in the sense, we can access the application from our local host configurations. Okay, So that's the reason I'm doing now colon local host and port is 1990 yeah. or oh, it should be um, 8080 either yeah so let's let's try to put 8080 Yeah, it should be 8080, right? So that's the reason you see, right? Prometheus time series collection has been invoked and we should see as you right? So this is the graphical interface or uh, nothing but an application which is we can see, right? So once we are able to access on port 8080, right? So that's the reason it says handling the connection on port port number 8080. And this is the, this is the Prometheus uh, server. Uh, this is the Prometheus application which got deployed in our EKS cluster as of now, okay? Okay, so now let's go to the next command. So to come out of this loop, what we need to do is we need to press control C. Yeah, I did that. That's the reason I came out of that loop. So now let me check the parts which are being running on the my EKS cluster by using command kubectl get parts. N is the namespace and the namespace which we can give is Prometheus. Yeah. So let's see what are the parts are been running. Okay, that's the same part which we saw above. It's here you go, right? So all the parts are been running successfully. There are two alert manager parts are been running. Prometheus cube set cube cube state matrix part is also running. Then the Prometheus node exporter. There are three parts are running. And push gateway. There are uh, two more parts are uh, parts are running. Yeah. So in general, so these are the parts which are related to the Kubernetes. Um, uh, uh, are, are these are related to the Prometheus um, services are running yeah now let's go to the next command that is the final stage where we need to install the Grafana yeah from where we can access the metrics logs and the traces from the Prometheus yeah so again to to help you understand Grafana is a uh, is a is a is a application through which you can visualize the the the, the logs traces and the uh, and the metrics being pushed by the Prometheus service from EKS cluster, okay, that's the reason. So this is like a, a dashboard service, Grafana is yeah? So let's do that. Let's see the graphical, let's access the Grafana after installing it. So let's follow the next next commands. So here again, as I said, so to segregate the configurations, what we do is we create a separate, separate namespaces in the EKS cluster. That's the reason I'm now creating a Grafana because here I will be installing the, the Grafana configurations, yeah? So here, so this is a bit long and lengthy, um, a lengthy command. Let me go through it. So here again, I'm leveraging the Helm utility, installing the Grafana, and we are using the name Grafana for slash Grafana tag. 
namespace is again we created the grafana so that's the reason same namespace has been used here then we are setting the the storage class equal to zippy2 yeah and the persistent is enabled and the admin password okay because to access the grafana ui uh, from the internet we need to set uh, the password as well okay so this is my password yeah and the values is again so as you see the value is is stored in the yaml dot grafana dot yaml file okay and the service is equal to we are pointing it to a load balancer service okay this is the general explanation of command if i run this it will throw an error because we because it it will not able to find the grafana dot yaml file okay so to do that what you need to do is i need to go to the grafana dot yaml file so the grafana dot yaml file is being stored in some other location i need to cd to that path yeah that is change directory to that that path okay so let me before that run the i command let me um let me go through this grafana dot yaml file so here we are introducing the graph uh, data source data source yaml api version equal to one data source equal to again both uh, prometheus and the type is prometheus and the, this is the default url access is proxy and is default true okay so that's the general configuration being there in this grafana dot yaml file and this file is stored under this path yeah that is the promo grafana hyphen prometheus part so let me go to this path i need to do a cd to this path then i need to run the command yeah so now i let me do a cd to this path while it do the cd to that path let me copy the command again so let's let's run this command again so here you go right we have changed the cd now let me run this command what it does is it will install the grafana service it will install the grafana load balancer in the sense through which we can access the grafana ui and also it, it also performs the deployment service configurations load balancer configurations a to z i mean in the sense complete end to end configurations will be done by this command okay henceforth it takes some time once this successfully configures configures we will be able to access the our grafana ui yeah? so that's what the next steps are while that is running so let's go to the next commands yeah next command is is nothing but once it if once if it goes successfully then we should be able to directly access the the grafana yeah so here you go right the service has installed successfully uh, but the name is grafana namespace is grafana yeah and and the last deployed is this date deployed status uh, the uh, the version is equal to revision equal to one and these are the updates okay so once that is done uh, let's check okay so again i need to use the kubectl command to check if all the services are running fine for this command yeah so let's go this and after that we will be going ahead to access the the grafana ui for now so we have successfully installed the grafana uh, grafana ui in the eks cluster as well yeah so if you go through this one once you go through this one you will understand what uh, what that command did yeah again i would recommend you to go through this command go through this logs from your side yeah so as of now what we are doing is we are checking what are being done what are the configurations are being done at grafana namespaces so what it done is it has the one pod it has installed the service grafana service there is a one deployment and then there is a one replica set okay so that's kind of, that's kind of configuration has been done here yeah so now let's let's access the um, the url yeah grafana url so how can i access that we can directly access this this is the external ip right that's the that's the thing we will extract now with using some so i'm doing the uh, i mean uh, the command line trick okay so here we are using the kubectl get service namespaces grafana grafana and and put the uh, get the output path and in that one we want the host name so it looks like problem in the uh, in the in the grafana in the output so let me um what we can do is we can we can directly access this by using the others uh, the, the other way command okay that is kubectl 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 get service get service svc the namespace is grafana So then we will be able to uh, see this, right? So this is the uh, the load balancer URL. Okay. So let's access this load balancer URL. 
and from there we can log in okay and this should be http because it's not secure right so that's the reason so that's this is http and that is a load balancer url here you go right we have successfully can access the grafana by using this load balancer url okay as when it while it is loading so here you go here we need to provide the user id and the password so let me give a hint okay so now before we go to the next step let me reiter reiterate it kubectl get service iphone grafana where i mean that would help us to get the service nothing but through which we can access the grafana yeah so here service type is load balancer this is the load balancer external external fqdn and once we went here and accessed it from the browser with using http colon forward slash okay remember that it's http colon forward slash and then we are here now user id yeah user id as as i as i let me show you so by default the user id of the grafana is admin and that's what the output says here if i go down above right third step is login the password from the step one using the username admin the password is the password which we have given here yeah which we given in the above command that is um, uh, the set password here right? while installing the uh, grafana we gave some password this is the password right and the username is admin so let me do that this is admin and password is the same password let me copy from there So this is the password. Yeah, so it looks like password is a bit wrong. Uh, let me copy it again. Uh, okay, so here admin is the user. Let me copy this and login. The user ID is wrong, so let me put it only this one. Here you go, right? I was putting double quotations, so you need to remove the single quote quotations, okay? So we were successfully logged in to our Grafana. So this is the Grafana UI which is running in my EKS cluster, which I have spinned up here, right? So now from this interface, you can monitor all your workloads running at your Kubernetes cluster, that is Amazon EKS service, Elastic Kubernetes service, okay? So while this, when you are able to access this one, let me give some hints about importing the some default dashboards which is given by the um, grafana okay so one is uh, one 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 dashboard ui is id is um, 3119 so let's access that 3119 is the dashboard default dashboard yeah so this is the cluster monitoring dashboard in the sense this dashboard will help you to gather the all data that are required uh, that are required on the cluster okay and we are pointing to the Prometheus that is default Prometheus. Let me click on import. In the sense, it will import the default, yeah? And we should see some metrics being pushed here, right? Here you go, right? So we have the, our cluster data available here. The, the cluster memory size is 23 GB, 23 GB, and the user GB is 1.64. The CPU says is total, total CPU is six core, right? Now we are, it's the 0.1 reading cluster file is something like this yeah and above one above one this is network io io uh, pressure data yeah and if i go down so this is the power cpu says graph similarly the containers cpu says graphs right you can dig down these and it will give very deeper insights okay so this is where the dashboard you can try to identify the root causes or try to a forecast your you can try to forecast your problem which can occur in the future okay in the sense this will help us to monitor the complete eks cluster and with and which will eventually help us to maintain our service highly available yeah so that's it i have successfully shown you the the required steps to be done um, to achieve this the eks amazon eks monitoring with using open source grafana and Prometheus. and finally how we have imported our example dashboard at the grafana ui okay so that, that with, with that note let me conclude here so thanks a lot for watching my videos kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot okay with that note thank you thanks a lot